praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and every last one of us shall always be glad and always rejoice in it. Today is the day to always give him thanks, praise, and glory. Not because you want something. Not because that you're in need of anything. It's because you're in love with Jesus. Your connection that you have with Jesus. Your relationship that you have with Jesus. Your bond that you have with Jesus. Your communication that you have with Jesus. Your, your love that you have with Jesus. Your friendship that you have with Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, hallelujah, he still sits on the throne. And he still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. When you know that God has your back, you ain't got to worry about nothing. You just sit still. You just rely on him. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's too faithful to even fail you. Too faithful to even give up on you. Too faithful to even turn his back. He don't roll like that. He don't rock like that. You can always count on him. You can always depend on him. And you can always, hallelujah, you can always rely on Jesus. There's nobody on this planet called Earth have your back like Jesus does. Not one person. He got you. Your job is, is to trust him. Let him lead the way. Sit back. Let him be the driver. Too many of y'all right now that you want to drive too. He don't need your help. If he needs your help, he'll ask you for your help. He created this whole world by himself. So that lets you know that he did not need your help at all. Sit in the back seat or sit on the passenger side and allow Jesus to take control. Too many of y'all right now today, you want to be in control. You want to be in charge. It can't be two masters. Somebody, somebody got to listen. At some point in your life, you got to want to say, you know what? I got to be the student. Because every time I get in God's way, Nothing never happened the way it's supposed to happen. And the reason why it don't go the way it's supposed to go is because you want to be in control. You want to be in charge. That ain't your job. That ain't your job at all. He don't need you. Sit sit to the side and let God do what he do best. He know what he doing. Just trust him. Everything going to look sketchy. If it look easy, everybody going to do it. He ain't going to do nothing in your life if it's easy. He put it there so he can be sketchy, so you can trust him. And I know it seems like it's never going to happen. I know it seems like it's never going to come to come together. Yes, it is. You just got to trust him. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home, to your life, or even your prayer closet room, please do so. And if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, please do so. He is waiting on you. He's available. His arms are open wide. Please return back to your first love. That's the best thing that you ever can do. Trust me. I promise you. You'll be the best person it is in the world when you do that. Give it to God. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all the thanks. Give me all the praise. Give me all the glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do right now. We just thank you, Father God, how you moved in our life. We thank you, Father God, how you guide us and directed us. We thank you, Father God, for the love that you have for us. We thank you, Father God, for the patience, Father God, that you have for us, Father God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, what you are doing, what you're about to do, Father God, in our life and this season. We thank you, Father God, for the rain that you're about to pour on us, Father God, in this land. We thank you, Father God, how you're about to 
You better guide us into the land, Father God, that you have promised your sons and your daughters right now today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we just thank you, Father God, that we can always talk to you about everything, Father God, whatever it is that's on our mind, whatever it is that's on our chest, Father God, that we can talk to you, Father God. We ain't got to worry about you, Father God, going around the social media, going around the world, Father God, telling our business, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today. It's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no place, Father God, that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus. But right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God. Heavenly Father God, allow your love to move through this place. Allow your presence to move through this place. Allow your angels to move through this place right now today. Father God, let your will be done, Father God. And it should not return back forward, Father God. Heavenly Father God, this is your time, this is your moment that I know that you're about to show up. That I know for a fact that you're about to show out. Heavenly Father God, I believe and I declare, I decree right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, that someone's going to be healed today, someone's going to be delivered today, someone is ready to get their life over to you right now today, Father God, and the angels are already rejoicing in heaven right now today. And Father God, you will and you shall get all the thanks and all the praise and all the glory for God. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father God, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Abba Father, you are welcome right now today to enter to your home, right here in your sanctuary right now today, right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, for help today for my brother and sister. I'm asking you, Father God, for strength. I'm asking you, Father God, for guidance and direction. I'm asking you, Jesus, for more wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Father God. Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, for a favor for my brother and sister. I'm asking you, Father God, for a financial blessing. I'm asking you, Father God, for a miracle. I'm asking you, Father God, to restore everything when the enemy has stolen from my brother and sister. I'm asking you, Father God, to soften their heart. Right now, I'm asking you, Father God, to touch them right now, to lift them up right now today, Father God. I'm asking you, Father God, to do a new thing in my brothers and my sisters' life, Father God. I'm asking you, Father God, just to take control, just to take over their life, Father God, their situation, Father God, their circumstances. Whatever it is that my brothers and my sisters are going through, Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, to take over right now. I'm asking you, Father God, just to lead the way. I'm asking you, Father God, to make a way out of no way, Father God. I'm asking you, Father God, for open doors. I'm asking you, Father God, for a miracle for him. I'm asking Father God for a blessing for him. I'm asking Father God for abundance for him. I'm asking Father God for more than enough. I'm asking Father God to make it known to them today. Father God, make it clear to them today. Father God, reveal yourself to them today. Father God, they are expecting to hear from you right now today. Father God, I'm asking Father God for a sign for my brother and sister. I'm asking Father God to send them an angel right now today. Father God, I'm asking Father God for a touch right now today. Father God, you know exactly what they're going through, what they're facing right now today. Father God, and my brothers and my sisters, we need you right now today father god have your way with us right now glory be to god holy spirit you're working right now you're invited right now today to enter to the house of the lord right now right here in this sanctuary right now right here on this youtube channel right here on this platform right here in my sister's home right here in my sister's life right here in my brother's home right here in my brother's life holy spirit i'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now holy spirit i'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you are a comforter holy spirit i'm asking you right now today to cry out our thoughts cry out our mind right now so we hear yourself still voice right now holy spirit i'm asking you to move through this place i'm asking you to enlighten us right now today allow us the holy ghost fire through this sermon through this service right now today glory be to god hear me father god as we repent of our sins today father god please forgive us for our sins known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow right now. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Glory to God. Heavenly Father God, words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, how blessed I am to pray. Praise and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters today, Father God, and one body in Christ today. Heavenly Father God, we're here today to let you know that I'm available for praise, I'm available for service, I'm available for the kingdom, but most of all, Jesus, that I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, there's something that's always in my mind about you. There's something that stays in my spirit about you. There's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you 
you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I give it all to you today, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you. That's why I magnify. That's why I glorify. That's why I exalt your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I have a hunger. That's why I have a thirst for you, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me today, and he told me to tell some people right now today, and you know exactly who you are. He wants you to keep quiet in this season. He don't want you to keep talking about what this person did to you, how this, how this person mistreated you, how this person took advantage of you. He said, you're talking too much about it. It's, that's the first thing on your mind. That's the last thing on your mind when you go to bed. He said, you have talked about it way too much. You have talked about it way too long. And he wants you to keep quiet right now. He don't want you to keep going on about it. He said, he knows what the person did to you. And he knows that you are hurt. He knows everything. There's nothing that God don't know. There's nothing that Jesus has not seen or even heard. He understands everything what took place. He understands what that person did to you. He get it. He get it. And best believe my sisters, best believe my brothers, God has already given them a warning about how they did you. He told them, don't you do that. He told them, if you don't want my son, you want my daughters, let them go. He told them, if you don't want my sons and my daughters, don't ask them for anything. But what did they do? They did the opposite. They did completely the opposite. And by you being a, a good person with a good heart and a big heart, God still wants you to be a good person no matter what. He still wants you to have that big heart. He still wants you to have that loving and kind heart. Because everybody's not like the like people, how they did you, how they mistreated you. God still wants you to be that person. Don't you stop being that kind person. Don't you stop being that loving person. Don't you stop being that person with a big heart because somebody did you wrong. Everybody got a price to pay. Everybody got to reap what they sow. But God just wants you to keep quiet. He said, it's bothering you too much. He said, some of y'all can't even thank me because of what you're thinking about. He said, some of y'all can't even pray to me because of what you're thinking about. He said, some of y'all can't even open up your Bible or even read a, a verse from me because of what you're thinking about. He said, some of y'all can't even take time just to, just to be in my presence just for 30 seconds because that's what you're thinking about. He said, you're all on the phone all day long calling every anybody and you talk about the same thing, the same subject over and over and over again. God said, you sound like a broken record right now. He just need you to keep quiet right now. He just need you to be still right now. He just need you to trust him right now that he's going to work it out. It's already done. It's already planned, my brothers and sisters. God said, let them keep playing. God said, he's going to show them who he is. And God said, you're going to see it. But when you see it, you're going to feel sorry for it. But when you feel sorry for it, do not intervene in God's business. Because the moment you intervene in God's business, you're going to be part of that business. Because he's going to let you see it. I can promise you now you're going to feel sorry for him. But if you put your hand in it, and you intervene in God's business, you're going to be part of that situation. You're going to be part of that circumstance. That's why he wants you to keep quiet right now. He don't want you to talk about it no more. Let today be the day that it ends. Let today be the day that it ease, that it cease from your mouth, from your mind, from your body, from your spirit. Get it out. If you're going to get it out, get everything out how this person did to you right now. At this very second, at this very minute, at this very moment. Get it out of your system. Because you have talked about it, you have talked about it, you have talked about it way too long. And God just wants you to be quiet right now. God say, let them keep playing. Because right now they're playing with God. You don't play with God. You don't test him. And that's what Pharaoh did. 
God told Pharaoh one time, let my people go. Pharaoh thought he was big and bad. Pharaoh felt like he couldn't be touched. God said, okay. The moment when God spoke to that person, and that person did you, God only said one time. God didn't get on the telephone call there about, oh, so-and-so think I'm playing. God didn't get on Facebook and say, oh, so-and-so think I'm playing. God didn't get on Instagram and say, oh, so-and-so think I'm playing. God didn't get on TikTok and tell everybody, oh, they think I'm playing. God didn't get on YouTube. God don't get on Snapchat. He didn't get on WhatsApp to tell everybody, oh, so-and-so think I'm playing. He only said it one time. And once he said it one time, that was it. That was it. And he kept quiet about it. He didn't open his mouth no more about it. And that's what God wants you to do, the same thing. Keep quiet. Stop talking about it. Because they think that God is playing. Pharaoh thought God was playing. And God had to show Pharaoh who was the boss. God had to show Pharaoh who run this world. God had to show Pharaoh who created this whole thing. God had to show Pharaoh who the one who's in control, who the one in charge. And God is saying the same thing. I'm going to show them who's the boss. I'm going to show them who is in control. I'm going to show them who is king of king and lord of lord. I'm going to show them, do not lay your hands on my anointing. Do not harm them in any kind of way. God said, I got to show them you messed up when you hurt my son, when you hurt my double because when you hurt them, you hurt me. God said, I got to show them. But God said, I need you to be quiet. I need you to sit still. I need you not to worry about it anymore. I need you to get out of your system right now. I need you to stop talking about it right now. Because they're going to let you see it. And best believe, they're going to cry out to you. Oh, they're going to cry out to you. It always worked that way. It's always going to happen that way. They're going to plead for you. But you better not intervene in that. You better not intervene in it. Because if you do, you're going to be part of that, you're going to be part of that problem. You're going to be part of that circumstances. You got to let God do what he do. God know how to handle the situation way more and farther better than you can. Too many of y'all right now today you want to put your hand in the cookie jar. God don't need your hand in the cookie jar. He don't need you in control. He don't need you in charge. Let him work it out. Because he's already going to work it out. Because they think they playing. They think God ain't going to do nothing. They think that God has forgotten about what they did to you. God ain't forgot about it. As some of y'all think that God has forgotten about it. That's why y'all still talking about it. God knows it's bothering you. He know, he know your heart. He created you. But in this season, he just need you to keep quiet. He don't want you to talk about it anymore. Because you're allowing it to take over your problems. You let it take over your circumstances. You let it take over in your home. You allow it to take over at the workplace. You allow it to take over in your career. You allow it to take over in your dreams. You allow it to take over when God said, let it go. Let it go. Let it be. I can take it from here. Let God do what he do best. Because God is going to show you. He don't need you to do nothing. He don't need you to get in and say, Jesus, oh, I got your back. Oh, I'm, I'm at your fight. He don't need your help. He got everything under control. He just needs you to keep quiet. That's all he needs you to do. Is to keep quiet in this season. You ain't got to worry about it. Because when God show them who he is, they're going to wish they did not do you the way they did you. They're going to cry and say, God, please stop. God, please, I don't have enough. That's why God needs you to keep quiet in this season. Because he's going to show them. He can show you better he can tell you. God can show you better than he can tell you. I know y'all all have heard that saying before. If you didn't hear it from your parents, you had to hear it from your grandparents. I can show you better than I can tell you. That's you know what God is saying. Let me show you. I just need you to keep quiet. That's all I need you to do. Amen? Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Exodus 14. And we're going to read verses 13 through 14. That's Exodus 14. And we're going to read verses 13 through 14. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. Look what he said. Stand firm. God needs to stand still. He needs to keep quiet. He don't need to talk about it no more. Because God said, I can show you better than I can tell you. 
He's telling you right now today, I can show you better than I can tell you, but I need to stand firm. And don't be afraid. Don't sit there and quest. Don't sit there and argue. Don't keep going back and forth with that person. Don't keep going back on the telephone talking to, talking to everybody about the problem, about the circumstance, about what the person did to you. He needs to keep quiet because he said, I can show you better than I can tell you. And he said, do not be afraid. I want you to stand firm and know that God got your back. He said, sit right here on my right hand side. He said, I got you. I'm going to protect you. I don't need you to do nothing. I'm going to handle this situation far better than what you even can think or even can imagine. I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. That's what he's saying. Tell somebody right now today that God said he can show you better than he can tell you. Amen? Amen. The Lord will bring, bring you today. The Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. Because when God show you, you'll never see that person again. Because you know why? They're going to be too ashamed to even face you. They're going to be too embarrassed to even face you. Even when they see in the grocery store, they're gonna put their head down. If they see if they see at the green light, like, they're gonna they're gonna look at you real quick. Whoop, go. If they see you at the mall, they're gonna put their head down. Wherever you at in their facility, when they see you, when they know that your presence around, they're gonna be too ashamed and too embarrassed to even look at you, to even say, Hey, how you doing? Because when God showed them who he is, when God showed them what he's going to do, they're going to wish they never laid hands on you. They're going to wish that your name was never in their mouth. They're going to wish they never took advantage of you. They're going to wish they never used you. They're going to wish they never asked you for nothing. They're going to wish they never cheated on you or played you out. They're going to wish a lot of things because God is going to handle that situation. I promise you, my sister, God's going to handle that situation, my brothers. I promise you, that's why he needs to be quiet in this season. He said, you ain't going to see him no more. He said, you ain't got to pick the phone up. You ain't got to call and go to text message. If they ain't going to call you, they ain't going to text you because they're going to be too embarrassed and too ashamed to even want to show their face. God's going to deal with them. God is going to deal with them. If he ain't dealing with them now, it's on the way. It's on the way. He don't need you to say anything no more about it because when God says, when I'm going to show you better than I can tell you, he believe, you, better, you best believe that he can show you better than he can tell you. Amen? Amen. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And he said in this season right now, he said, I'm fighting for you. I'm defending you and I'm protecting you. I just need you in this season to keep quiet. That's all he's saying. I need you in this season to keep quiet. I need you to get it all out of your system right now today. Because when I show them who I am, he said no longer that you will see them. No longer that you got to put up with, No longer that they'll do it to nobody else. Because a lesson, gonna be, a lesson is going be, gonna to be taught in this situation. God is going to deal with them. I promise you, when God get done with them, they'll never do it to nobody else again. Because they got to get their lesson learned. They ain't learned their lesson yet. But when God give it them, they'll, they'll, know, they'll know the next time not to ever do it to anybody ever again. Because you know why? They're going to be too embarrassed and too ashamed what God is going to do to them. That's why he said, I can show you better than I can tell you. So I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who this word is for today. But God say, don't talk about it no more. You get it all like your system. God said, they think they're playing with them. But God said, I'm going to show them. He says he's going to show them in this season. They don't know. They messed with the wrong child. And if you like what you heard, and you know God is talking to you, go ahead and hit this like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, while I was praying a simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happen. Continue to hold on to his unchanged hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. 
Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name. Amen.